So, um, yeah, I need to get, I need to get it together. Yo, 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 we are live. Hey, oh. y'all. Hey, 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 hey. It is <laughs> Pimp Yo PR Wednesday. I'm trying to make sure that uh, we are so uh, actually broadcasting there. Uh, I believe so. I think we are getting audio. Somebody, all right. Coach Tawana, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Y'all know how I get of trying to just make sure we are out there live. I just need one person to tell me we live and y'all can hear and see me and all that good stuff. I can hear you. All right, so let's get started. This is Pimp Yo PR Wednesday. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo, woo-hoo. My on screen things aren't working. And I have, first of all, let me just tell y'all, I'm a bit like in my feelings because one of my Mavericks was on Dr. Oz today. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm a bit lit. Y'all know how it gets. So this is TJ Mercer. I'm known as the chief noisemaker of Media Mavericks Academy, which means I teach authors, experts, coaches, and entrepreneurs how to book themselves in the media without a publicist and without being a celebrity. And I'm a beast at it because hence my, one of my Mavericks was on Dr. Oz. (laughs) So I am excited today. I'm excited today. Uh Oh, because I get to play with the utterly delicious, yummy (laughs) Carrie Ann. Oh Lord. I just practiced saying her last name and I forgot already how to say it. I'm going to let her tell you her own last name. Wait, no, wait, wait, hold on. Let me think. Um, What did she tell me? How to pronounce it? Malat. Yeah, you got it. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) So Carrie Ann Malat. And I met Carrie Ann because I was teaching a media workshop in L.A. She used to live in L.A. And I just vibed with her because she don't. And I just kept hugging her and invading her personal space. (laughs) Because that's what I do. I invade folks' personal space if they let me. Um, And we just kind of vibed. And I learned that her lane of genius, her sweet spot, her thing is social media. And the reason why is social media is because she used to be the director of social media for eHarmony. Y'all know eHarmony? Maybe a little bit, some, some. I think you have to be living under a rock not to know (laughs) eHarmony. And so I reached out to her because I'm really wanting pimp your PR to not just be about the actual booking yourself, which is where, you know, my sweet spot is of actually booking yourself, but rather uh, to help you be well-rounded because there's no sense of, and I keep looking that way because that's what my TV is, but there's no reason to have you booked and then you don't know how to leverage it and take it to the next level. I'm not about doing media for the sake of doing media. I am about doing media for the sake of serving some folks. And so me using, you know, m- media like ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox uh, are just opportunities for you to serve more people quicker, sooner, faster. So I am bringing Carrie in here today because I wanted her to go a little bit deeper because she's versed in m- several platforms. Um, and, you know, Google, Instagram, uh, Facebook, she can talk about various platforms. So I wanted you guys to get an opportunity to um, ask her questions, but also for her to pour into you for stuff you don't even know how to ask. So ladies and gentlemen, gents and fellas and gen- women and uh, uh, ladies and all that good stuff. <laughs> Welcome, my girl, Miss Carrie Ann Malou. <laughs> Thanks, TJ. Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. So tell them a little bit about your background. Yes. Well, of, of you know, why, why should we be listening to you? 
Sure, sure. So I, I always say my, my career was lined up by the stars because social media wasn't a thing when I was in college, right? But me and Mark Zuckerberg were like in college at the same time. So it was like being built as I'm learning uh, my degrees in advertising and marketing. And so my space oh, so actually- you have a up. degree in this stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. You, oh, you, that girl. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And it was fascinating to me because I'd be in school and they'd be teaching us principles from like the 1800s that still work in advertising. Right. And then I'd go home at night and I'd get on my space and I'd try and apply the same theories and principles to a new thing called social networking. Right. Okay. Like how do we use it for business here? And um, that was like 2004. So I've been every day on some sort of platform, maybe multiple ones, right? Applying real business principles to these social places. And yes, that led me to a whole entire career working for, for myself, for other clients, for eHarmony, corporations. And that led me to, to where we are today, never stopping once. <laughs> so what is it that you love about what you're doing? I love about what I'm doing, the fact that I am 50-50 left brain, right brain. So ah. I'm both creative and very analytical. And See, social- exactly. Hold up. No, See, that's yeah. not fair. I can't stand people like you. <laughs> like, I can't stand it. Because I'm so right brain and don't have a lick of left brain in me. And then I get run up against people like you and you are able to function in both spaces. And I get jealous and I just want to hate on you. But go ahead. Sorry, my bad. Hey, <laughs> I get it. I get it. But you have things I need that I want that I can't have. So, you know. Um, but yeah, I say I'm Crayola markers on an Excel spreadsheet, right? Like you got it in social oh, media. Oh, I love that. Thanks. You, you have to have both if you want to do it right. You know, you got to be creative and then you have to be analytical and look at the metrics. So that's why I love social media. Okay. So then Carrie Ann, mm -hmm. I'm struggling with the whole, you got to be both because what if, if what, what can someone like me do to, cause I don't like studying the metrics. Right. It's not my favorite. I don't, yeah, I don't I don't like that. I just like to come on here and talk to people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what is kind of like step one of understanding why someone like me has to force herself? What's the benefit of getting into the metrics of it all? Well, you, you can't measure what you can't track. Right. So. It's, it's partly that and that you, you want to know if this is working for you because a lot of people are just throwing stuff against the wall to see if it sticks, right? And, yeah. you know, if it's a hobby, that's cool. But, like, you know, time is money and money is power and power is good. So we want, <laughs> we want to make sure that your time is spent wisely. So that's why the metrics help you gauge what's working, what's not working. You do a post and it's, like, just a few likes Ooh, it didn't really work. You do another post, totally different, different time, different copy, and it, people love it and share it and comment. You're like, okay, so now I can just compare the two, and then you want to duplicate the one that worked for you, you know? Okay. And what is your, what is your, I may have to refresh my page because it is not letting me put anything on the screen. Like I, I've been trying to get your name up on the screen. So I'm going to ask this question. And then I'm going to refresh my page while you're answering. It's not going to delete. It's not going to end the broadcast. It's just going to refresh it. So okay. I'm going to let you answer. You'll probably see me disappear for a minute, but I'll be back. So okay. what would you say is your favorite pro? Okay. Put it like to, to you like this. Can you tell us what platforms work best for different categories of business and expertise? Mm -hmm. Great question. Okay. Okay. So, so start answering. I'm a refresh so that hopefully it will let me come back in and um, okay. engage better. Okay. You got it. Okay. okay. All right. So here's what I say, guys, when it comes to the different platforms and what you, what you do in business or what category you fall under, um, to be honest with you, it's not as important as what content you're putting out on the various platforms. Right. So like, you could be using um, Pinterest and let's say you're in like, you have a, a physical product that's in the fashion industry, right? Um, 
beauty industry, right? That's a great place for you to be because that category is very popular on Pinterest, right? Um, but here's the thing, Facebook, Instagram, even Pinterest and Twitter and all of these, right, have millions, if not billions, 3.2 billion people on Facebook. Uh, it's, it's so many people that it's really not about like which platforms are best for your business. It's about the quality of content and the strategy you have behind what you're going to put on those platforms. Does that make sense? Uh, from what I heard, yes. I see you back. Yeah. Yep. From okay. what I heard, yes, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not a time where like there used to be a time, like when I started my career years ago, there used to be a time where it was like, I mean, just for example, you couldn't be on my space today if it was still a thing, you know, because it's not relevant. Right. But really we're at a time and in, in, in place in the information era where everyone's here. Right. So now it's a matter of like, how do you stand out from everybody else? How do you get attention and eyeballs on you? Because that's, that's the more important question. Right. It's like, how do you stand out? So then speaking of that, then what is the difference between social media and social media marketing? Ooh, I love that question. Mm -hmm. So social media is a post where like your sister cooked food for dinner for the kids and she made hamburgers and the difference of McDonald's posting something about the Big Mac right? Like on Facebook, both of them on Facebook, right? Because social media for regular people is just posts about your family, your life, your friends, your interests, your hobbies, your whatever, you're mad, you're venting, right? Whatever. <laughs> social media marketing is, there's a commerce goal in mind. There's a revenue goal in mind. There is a business growth goal in mind behind every strategic thing you're going to do on the same place your sister posted about burgers for dinner. I like that. So then you you need to be clear of your intent behind why you are posting. Yes. Okay. Then th that leads me into, um, well, first of all, tell us what you were responsible for at eHarmony. Sure. Yeah. Many things. So um, I ran the department. So it was both a content strategy as well as an advertising strategy and implementation. I had people doing different roles, uh, depending on, the, you know, what we needed community management every day to speak to the millions of people connected to our brand. Okay. Um, I actually created a lot of the content, which is how I got my start and how I had to overcome my fear of going live for the first mm -hmm. time was there. So a lot of content creation just to get, you know, um, the brand objectives handled and to communicate with our audiences. And then, yes, the advertising, you know, working directly with Facebook and Twitter and, you know, Google and YouTube, um, Instagram to accomplish our business goals there as well. So eHarmony is huge, you mm -hmm. know. So what are some of the strategies that we can take from a company who like eHarmony that you were, you know, the brains behind as far as their social media placement, mm -hmm. like eHarmony has Facebook pages. They have, they have a presence everywhere. Um, right. Yeah. So is that necessary for us? Like, do we need to have a personal profile? We have to have business profile. We've got to have a Facebook page, biz page. We got to have mm -hmm. a Facebook group. Like, and that's a lot. It's a and lot. It really is. And especially if it's someone who is, uh, a, you know, a solo entrepreneur, you know, having to start from scratch and build it themselves. So what are the yep. bare essentials that we could, we can, you know, not be big as eHarmony, but can use some of their strategies to apply to what we do? Right. And, and I'm glad you're bringing it up as a, as a comparison, too, because the cool part here is that big brands and solopreneurs get to play in the same sandbox. It uh, never was available. It never was available until social media came along. Right. So it's an incredible opportunity as a solopreneur, small business owner to play in the same sandbox. Right. Like especially when you're running ads, like you can have your ad and then a major brand would be right underneath that in someone's news feed. So that's really special today. Um, and that's why I really encourage people to figure it out because you have this opportunity, you know, mm -hmm. but um, I say, I say there's five places you have to be if you're a solopreneur. Okay. Because you can't do everything. And my, my biggest piece of advice about that is, um, you know, 
especially if you're just one person wearing multiple hats, like you can't go and open a profile and what I call it looks like you're opening a store and you got employees in the first day and you cut the ribbon and you're, oh, we're here, we're here. And then you abandon it and don't put anything on that profile or that page. It looks like someone's going to come by later and it's a store where there's no employees, but the lights are still on. It's confusing. So you don't want to start something you can't finish or maintain. Um, so, so really you need a personal profile on Facebook. You need a Facebook page, especially if you're going to run advertising, because that's currently the only place that you can do that. And there are tons of metrics. I know you don't love, but tons of metrics there that'll help you understand what's going on. Um, a Facebook group is really powerful today. Groups are really coming up. Like the group used to be big and then it kind of faded out. And now it's really powerful for community and connection. Mm -hmm. um, and then I say the other two are going to be a LinkedIn profile, which is your B2B and your professional networking playground. Okay. Tawana like, uh, Ross is one, is the LinkedIn professor. She's one of my original mappers. I don't know if she's still here, but uh, she would love that. She's known as the LinkedIn professor. I love uh, that. She would love that you threw that out there. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. And also as a little hint, Facebook Live is here, but LinkedIn Live is also coming. It's in beta right now, and it's going to be rolled out to everyone. So a huge opportunity for early adopters to get in on that platform and build something. Okay. Um, and then the, the last one is the Instagram business profile. So there's my top five. <laughs> Wait, the Instagram business profile? Is there a difference between the Instagram biz and Instagram? Yes. Oh, I thought they were all like, you just set up a profile. No, there's a business profile. You can turn yours into a business profile, go into your settings. It's going to give you metrics and data, and it's going to give you more about who's seeing what, how it's doing, how it's performing. People can contact and message you. Um, it's wow. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. Okay. So when should a person convert from a personal profile to a, um, a, bi a business profile on Instagram? If they're in business, they should have a business profile. Okay, well, I think you just stepped on my toes. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, I had one. I had one just personal. Next time you uh, decide you're going to hurt my little feelings. Did y'all know that? <laughs> Tell me in the chat. Did y'all know that? Don't be making me look like I'm the only one that's been clueless. Like, I had no idea. So... You are you suggesting that I go soon as we log off, I go and convert my Instagram to a business profile. It would be beneficial, right? It's not mandatory. Like you can still do business, you can still communicate. If you are my coach, Carrie Ann, in yes, social media, yes. would you be coaching me to turn it into a business profile? Yes. Yes. Y'all get that? That right there. Did y'all get that? I I had no idea. Okay. See, this is why I got to have more people on to help me be better. Um, I lost my whole train of thought with that one. Like, I had no idea. Um, oh, gosh. I've lost my whole train of thought. That's all good. No, it's, it's helpful, though, because if you've got, you know, extra tools for your business, right? That's for also my free 99, my favorite price, free 99, right? Like it, they don't charge you for that. So it's extra tools you get from the Facebook family because Facebook owns Instagram. That's gonna help you in business. Just understand a little bit more about what's happening with your profile and all your activity and who you're connecting with and you know, to get people to communicate with you, reach out to you easier. It's just kind of a little more professional, um, you know, appeal to your audience as well so well while i have you here instagram changed their algorithms recently and guys feel free to share this out with with your pals who need to get some social media in their lives um <laughs> well social media expertise in their lives um instagram changed their algorithms and i've noticed not because i had a bunch of bots following me but I just kind of noticed that my, I feel like my visibility has changed. Mm. Have you noticed that? And if are there things that we should be looking out for to be more visible, you know, in the Instagram space? Yeah, Instagram's oh, tricky. Wait, wait, wait. wait. 
and and is changing it into a business profile going to actually limit the exposure just like when Facebook went over to pushing people to mm-hmm. you know Facebook ads so can you speak to both of those yes I can so I have a phrase that I've used for years that's so true and it is social media works when you work it and it doesn't when you don't okay and that is, I've done it myself where I've neglected something or I've, you know, focused attention over here and it just goes crickets, chirp, 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 nothing happening, right? You post mm-hmm. something, mm, nothing, right? But when you are working your social media where you're actually engaging with people, you're posting dope content, people are sharing it, liking it, commenting, sliding your DMs, like all of these are signals, whether it's Instagram or Facebook that Instagram and Facebook needs to see to be like, hey, we got a hot one. She's really doing something here and we want to share her more with our people because that's what they want. They want good quality content happening on their platforms. So the algorithm rewards you for that, right? Like you're gonna be shown to more people, the higher your engagement is, the higher the interaction is with you and other people. Like, and it's so funny, TJ, because like my son, he's 17, right? So all, all of them, they'll post pictures on their Instagram and they'll get like hundreds of likes. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, you know, hey, I got 59 today, you know, and they, it's because they engage with each other all the time. There's okay. a lot of activity happening. So they're recording. Okay. And that one, Annette is asking how often, and guys, you can feel free to post your questions too. How often should you post on all these platforms? Great question. So I would I would turn around and ask Annette, I would say, um, what goals are you trying to reach, right? Because if you can't handle all of the, the barrage of people coming to you in business, then you don't need to post as often, right? <laughs> but like if you do want to try and get more business and get more eyeballs, then you need to be posting frequently. And here's the thing. You have to be careful because that algorithm we were just talking about, if you just barrage people with posts that aren't getting the engagement, that's also a signal to Facebook that, hey, this isn't working so well. We're not going to share. And now she's actually just posting a lot too much. Okay. And so, so it's really more about like, the, again, the quality of your content that you're sharing with people and what's happening once you do post it. If you're getting good engagement and people are responding to you, and there's a secret sauce to how that happens, but you know when when that's happening, you don't have to post as often, right? Because you you've captured their attention and their eyeballs on you. So you have to have your and everyone has their own algorithm, right? Mm-hmm. Like yours is different than mine. So and Facebook knows what to do with with your content. So, but typically, if you want an answer, I would say. Um, you know, at least once a day, you know, if you have a group and a personal profile, one in each, at least um, a group as well, right? If you're going to post something in a group. Okay. Um, You mentioned about it being some secret sauce. (laughs) Yes. um, So, and and, and that, as soon as I said it, and that posted, I need some secret sauce. So is it, is, how do... What secret sauce can you tell us to actually increase our visibility to make sure that we're we're being seen? Well, and you're you're one of the people who does a good job of what I'm going to share. I Um, do. Okay, well, I I can keep doing it. I love it. Yes. Well, this is a perfect example. What you're doing right now with me as a guest, you do every Wednesday with Pimp Your PR Wednesdays. You offer value to your community Mm -hmm. that you don't charge for it. It's extremely helpful. And there is a positive experience for your audience, right? They gain something from this conversation. They're here with us, right? Y'all gain something, right? Y'all gain something, right? Okay, go ahead. (laughs) Of course they did. So the secret sauce is to give, 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 get, right? Entrepreneurs, I feel, really, they tend to, 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 to put the me in social media a lot. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, buy my stuff, join my team, uh, you know, buy my things, book here, buy now. And it's like, people don't come to Facebook and Instagram for a 24-hour commercial. Like, no, <laughs> that's not why they're here. So I like that because that's one of the principles that I teach. And if you're new to me, 
uh, with Media Mavericks, that is that is one of the principles that you always need to stay tuned to serving and serving from a place of W-I-I-F-T-V-T-L-T-R. What's in it for the viewer? What's in it for the listener? What's in it for the reader? Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, so you're right on, right? And it's the same thing, like your personal profiles or your, your you know, who you are and how you show up on social media is for a business purpose, right? Great. But mm -hmm. the secret sauce is giving value to the audience because people come to, I, I say there's three categories of value. Right. So like your post should should have one of these three as far as the intention behind it. Right. Be informative, be educational or be entertaining. If it's one of those three things. Right. You're sharing news about something going on. You're teaching something of value or you're entertaining. You're funny as heck, whatever it may be. Like that's what people want. It's the same thing with TV. Right. Mm -hmm. Movies. It doesn't matter. Look. They want to be entertained, educated, or informed about something. And so if your post is self-serving and about you, the audience isn't necessarily there for that, mm -hmm. right? Because this is a social platform. Business right. just happens to be able to be done on it the right way. But it's they're there first to see their sister's post about dinner and the nephew, oh, look at him. Man, he's getting big, right? That's the first point. So okay. how do you feel, how do you feel, and I could be doing this all wrong, but how do you feel about, I, on my personal Facebook page, you get all the TJ, like right. you're going to get stories about my mama. You're going to get stories about me. You're going to get media tips. You're going to get me selling something. You're going to get it all. Am I doing the right thing or no? Yeah, you are. You are because so so the first thing is a lot of entrepreneurs put the me in social media, but they also forget the first word entirely. Social, which is social. <laughs> I have to think about what's the first word. Oh, social. <laughs> you're right. And talking about your mom and talking about your travels and you know where you're going next and you know all of that is a perfect like you you have all the pieces together. Like you do it really really well because you are you. Like you said, I'm TJ on my personal profile. That's what we want to see. We want to know you're relatable, that, that we can understand you. We like you. We trust you, right? That's, that's how that actually gets accomplished is by you being you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Lee Ryman asked, what was Lee's question? Uh, Lee wanted to know, can you post the same thing on a page and in a group? You can. Um, here's an example of what I do. So if I have something that's really like helpful for the people following me and I have my page, Carrie Ann Malat, and then I have Carrie Ann's Money Makers, which is my Facebook group for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and that's going to help both of them. I address the posts for my Money Makers. I'll say, hey, Money Makers, like, is anyone on Pinterest? I, you know, just shared it earlier, you know, and I talk directly to them so they know this is, this is, I'm addressing them specifically. Right. And then mm -hmm. um, you could share the same thing and just, you know, switch your copy up a little bit if it's still valuable. Uh, yeah. You can do that. I, again, it's about what's the intention behind the post. Like who are you trying to help or who is it aimed for? But yeah, you could. And then Lee had, Lee had another question. Are Facebook ads worth the money in the family caregiving slash aging space? Yes, right? Because I believe the target market there is baby boomers, right? Who are having to address this, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Now here's the Facebook ads. We could have a whole nother session on just Facebook ads. Right. Um, there's a way to do it right and a way to do it wrong where Facebook will take your money so quick, you won't know what happened. Um, but yes, absolutely. I would recommend you get really specific in your targeting and that the targeting matches the content and you speak directly to your avatar, right? Like who are you really talking to? Right. Okay. And, and then it'll work. And over the long run, ads don't give you overnight success. That's different. But yes, they do work. Would it serve you guys if I brought an expert on um, to just deal with Facebook ads? Because I just saw that the person who comes to mind uh, just logged in. Kim Phillips, if you still there, uh, this is me officially asking you to come talk to my Pimp Your PR people. If it will serve them, and that's the hint that I actually know it will serve them because everybody wants to actually demystify this whole Facebook ads thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
So Kim Phillips, this is this is your favorite TJ asking you to find time on a Wednesday to come talk to my people about Facebook ads because Kim has a beast program about it. All right. Love so it. let's um let's pivot. Um Lee Ryman says yes. Lugenia said, Facebook ad, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. See, see what you started, Carrie Ann? I know, I know, and I, I do the same thing. It's a very specialized group of clients I work with for ads because it is and a whole Kim other world. Right there, she just said, see, you you know, a closed mouth don't get fed. Yeah. So Kim goes, of course, my love. Kim is one of the premier digital marketing strategists. So um, I see her. Yeah, so oh, she... Yes. She's dope. And so, yes. So I'm going to coordinate with Kim and Kim's going to come on and she's going to demystify Facebook ads for us. Um, I love my, my crew. My crew is just dope. So let's pivot a little bit, Carrie Ann, because sure. you said it earlier of e working at eHarmony really what it, it forced you being the former, uh, the social media director at eHarmony Harmony, it forced you to have to get out of your head and actually do more Facebook lives. So yeah. will you will you talk a little bit about that? What is, is it that you think has people afraid? Because I'm always a talker. So going live is nothing for me, you know, because right. I'm just like, I'm just, as long as I, I have something to tell you and I have something I think is value, I don't have any problem. But what do you think is one of the biggest things that holds people back from doing live? Yeah, it's fear. And um, before, like, I, I recognize when I left corporate America, I recognized looking back at my four and almost four and a half years at eHarmony, what was the most powerful thing that I learned or that came out in the social media space? And it was the ability to go live on behalf of a company, right? The ability to go live and to communicate in real time with your audience. It was the most powerful thing I've seen in my entire 14 year career in social media. And it, requires the person who is going live to literally put themselves in the spotlight. Mm. And I, you know, you know how they say like <laughs> people would rather die than do public speaking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but how, imagine the fear of people holding a phone and looking into a tiny little hole this big and no one there and responding. And is anyone answer? Hello, Bueller. Like it's a whole bunch of fear that will make you just be like, I'm good. I'm not doing this. Right. And you know, what are they thinking about me? Do I look okay on camera? Like I gained weight since high school. Who am I to be this person in this? Something audience? I don't ever think about. Like, I just want to know, can they see me? Can they hear me? It, it, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have, you have, you are in like the top 1% of all human beings who are radiating confidence in every pore of your body. And so, you know, we, we all want the top them. 1% of something. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the confidence quoted quotient, right? And uh, and so people get stuck in their head. And what happens is they allow the fear of those thoughts, which most people aren't even thinking, right, about you, to to halt them in their ability to actually go live. Uh, the judgment, the fear of judgment, and what people might think. Uh, what am I going to say? You know what you could say. You know what you're doing. You've been doing it for a long time, probably. Like, you're the expert. You know what you're talking about. But when you get a, a camera face in you, <laughs> a lot of people freeze up. And I think going live actually makes it even harder because of those things. It's a phone. It's Facebook. It's a little tiny camera. Is anyone going to show up? Who I'm talking to the dark. Like, there's a lot of different things than being on media TV where you've got a camera crew audience, you know, an interviewer with you. So, and so then give us, give us what you have discovered is best practice of conquering some of that fear. I did a acronym around live because you know, I'm the queen of acronyms. So yeah. I did a acronym around the, 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 you know, live stream. Cause I do teach just a little bit, just a tiny bit, when I teach media, but I would love to hear from someone like you who's done it for big, big brand. And now you're doing it for yourself, Who, which mm -hmm. by the way, um, I'm typing out the name of your book right now for them. Oh, yes. But thanks. Give, um, give them some, some of the things they can do to combat the fear. So here, here's what I realized when I really, first of all, I interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs, coaches, experts, authors, like people who are, are comfortable speaking, who were still scared to go live, 
right? And I'm like, mm-hmm. something's up here. Like if the speakers are scared to do this, we really have to uncover what's up. And so I researched and interviewed a lot of people and then reflected back on my time at eHarmony. And here's what I realized. In order for you to overcome your fear, you have to understand that the ego is at play. And ah. the ego... Somebody needs to write that down. Oh, you, you just wait. Listen to this. This is so... Look, I'll get goosebumps because this is so big. I was at eHarmony and it was like, it's you. You got to do this. And I'm looking for the... I'm like... Like, who? I'm, it's don't, who? <laughs> don't we need to cast a size zero blonde chick? Because I've been in casting with the commercials, like that's the, okay. So the first thing is a lot of people think about that, like, am I the right one? I don't think so. But here's the thing: that's all ego, right? right? Because you know more about your product, service, business than a spokesperson ever could. You speak more passionately about your business, product, service than they could. So you right. are the right person. But here's where it came down to. You have to realize that your ego is not as important as the help your audience is going to receive. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh, did y'all catch that? Say that again. Your ego. Your ego is not as your ego is not as important as the help your audience is going to receive. And in business, you solve a problem. Everyone in business solves a problem, right? Your product will help them. Your service will help them. But everyone's solving problems in business. That's why you're in business. And I realized at eHarmony that we had a bunch of confused, frustrated, uh, rejected, lonely, excited, mad, happy, all the emotions that come with dating. Can we just, what? Okay. Like, that's a lot. They needed help. They needed encouragement. They needed answers. They needed tips on how to make a profile better. They needed customer service assistance. They needed a, you know what? Don't worry about him. He didn't write you back. Who cares? You're beautiful. It's going to be fine. Let's keep it moving. Let's go back and like, go look at your matches again. You know what I mean? Their help and what they needed was way more important than my ego of what I might look like on camera. Oh, that was good. That was good. And if you think about it like that, you are in your own way from serving the people you actually went into business to serve. Wow. I think you just changed the game for (laughs) quite a bit of people on that one. Your ego is not as important as the help your peeps will receive. And that reminds me of something I think we were talking about um, before we even went live of, I just lost my train of thought. Cause I'm still processing like that. Was <laughs> it's deep, right? I mean, it's yeah, deep. Because it really does. I love that. If you, what you're teaching and what you're saying is complimentary to what I've been, you know, drill, get over yourself y'all. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was cons- uh, cause the, my acronym for voice, the C is consider it ain't about you, boo. <laughs> I love it. It ain't about you at no. all. No. So, you know, get over yourself. Okay, that's what it was. So one of the things that we were talking about before we went live is if you are not going live during this culture of social media, it yeah. really is impacting your bottom line. Yep. Go expound on that a little bit because you and I talked about it. Sure. We touched it right before we were going live, and then I was like, "Oh wait, we gotta go live." Yeah, <laughs> we get into our conversation. Um, yeah, so let's talk. Let's bring it back to the the algorithm again, right? So Facebook has its algorithm. For those of you who don't know, it's really their formula that that determines what you see in your news feed, right? They have to organize it for you, or it'd be a hot mess. Trust me. So they have this formula that does that now. The number one tool you can use that's in your toolkit as a marketer for your business is going live. Why? Because it receives up to six times the level of engagement from any other type of post. Wait, whoa, whoa. Say that again. Don't I need you to say that slowly because I think I even I needed to hear that myself. Yeah. Like what? Say that again. A Facebook live video receives up to six times more engagement 
likes, reactions, shares, comments than any other type of post you can make. And Facebook's making it that way because they want you to use video. Video is the future of Facebook. If you haven't heard it now, you heard it today. Facebook is looking at video. It's going to be video, video, video everywhere, right? Facebook watch is their answer to Netflix, Hulu. Okay, so they need you, especially I'm talking to everyone out here who's an entrepreneur, they need you to go live to create bomb dope content because they need commercials to go somewhere. And if you yeah. are doing a video, you know what I'm saying? That's perfect to do an ad break to run a commercial in and then bring back your content, right? This is future stuff. You're starting to see some of it already, but um, so they encourage and reward you right now. It won't always be this way, but right now they will reward you for going live by putting your video into the newsfeed more than if you were to just write a post or share a picture. See, I don't really like hearing the truth. <laughs> Because I'm the type that going live doesn't bother me at all. And, and people, you know, they love when I go on my rants or, you know, if I even turn my stories into a live. But I don't know. It's just the, I don't know, just to get me to do it. And then I edited television for 20 years. So I'm not a person and I'm just telling on myself. I'm just telling on myself, okay? Okay. I'm not a person that, that wants to actually sit and watch a video. So in that, it messes with my mind because then I'm like, well, I don't really want to watch nobody else's video because I edited for TV for 20 years. So the yeah. last thing I want to do is sit still and watch a video. I read. So I will read a long post before I will sit there and watch a talking head video. And then even then I'm looking at, okay, it's four minutes. Okay, I can do four minutes. Um, <laughs> so it gets in my head of, well, if I don't really want to watch nobody else's video, then why should I go live and people, and Renee has to tell me all the time, cause it ain't about you. Mm. It, you know, it ain't about you. It's, you know, people like my stories. Um, does it have an impact though? You know, like I use be live as my platform to go live just because I mm -hmm. like the interaction. It gets me. I can, um, uh, I can, you know, put in your names and everything. The, is Facebook um, is Facebook able to? What's the algorithm like? Of do they are they okay with the B lives? How does it affect me? You know, or do you know? I don't know, but I have I have hunches. Um, and in the past, they don't love third party platforms. Like yeah. Taking over their platform. Right. Uh, they want what's called native content, which is native being you do it on the Facebook platform. Um, I've tested this myself when I've like wanted to schedule something in advance through a third party um, mm -hmm. like a Hootsuite or you know, a buffer or something like that. Yeah. You get lower reach when you use a third okay. party. Now, here's the other part, though. Like, you know, if you got good content and you've got friends coming to you because you said this is going to be at 915 on Wednesdays and every week it's bomb and it's helpful and valuable. Like who cares? You're going to have your people, you know? Okay. So that's, again, it comes back to the quality of content. And I know that if so you saw somebody. Like me, Co Coach Carrie Ann, um, mm -hmm. that you are uh, chastising me on the sly. Like, <laughs> no, because I was looking for the excuse and you were like, yeah, that ain't, that, that's kind of what I was peeping. <laughs> like, you, you don't want to stop pimp your PR, do you? You don't want to stop this. You don't want to stop this. <laughs> this is too good. You have, you have already made the bed, lady, you made the bed. <laughs> I tell them something, y'all be trying to hold me accountable. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay. So then let me go back to questions. Cause I want to make mm -hmm. sure that people have access to getting their questions answered. So watch parties. I saw Lee Ryman ask me about watch parties or not <laughs> ask me. She didn't ask me. She asked you, um, <laughs> what are, I, and I, because I don't want to watch video anyway. So I just skip over them. What are watch parties and why do we use them? Oh, Lord. I did a whole video on this one because <laughs> people were asking me and, and, and in the direct sales community, people are using watch parties in the, the way that Facebook did not intend you to use them. 
Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's a repeat of a QVC show that people didn't ask to, to watch in the first place. So it's kind of like, a, you, nope, you're going to get unfriended or hid or blocked quicker if you use it the wrong way. But okay. watch parties, the intention that Facebook had for watch parties was for you to get some friends together. You create a playlist of at least one video of pre-recorded or live videos happening on Facebook. And you guys get to like eat your popcorn and chat with each other in real time together while you watch this video. Um, if you remember, Facebook Watch is their new TV mm-hmm. platform, right? right? So they their intention is like grab videos from Facebook Facebook watch or videos on the platform and watch them with your friends. Right. Okay. Okay. Ebony just asked, what about paying for marketing, boosting posts, paying for Facebook ads? You find them valuable. Ebony, if you go back and watch the replay, we hit that. And uh, one of my good, good beast of a friend agreed. Y'all saw it. She said she would come on. So I'm going to have her do a whole uh, Pimp Your PR Wednesday about nothing but money and marketing for Facebook ads and all of that good stuff. Um, Tell us a little bit more about Carrie Ann. You have... Hold on. I'm trying to make sure I, I asked all the questions that I okay. wanted to ask you. Hold on. Did we touch on what are some, some tasks, some blah, 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 blah. what are some tactics for, you know, them to stand out in the news feed that's already crowded? Did we already touch on that? Not, not yet. I have a few tactics for everybody. Okay. Let's yeah. Hit, hit us with those, okay. baby. Hit us with all those. Right. So the first thing is we talked a minute ago about um, what type of posts work really well, what Facebook will reward you for doing and Facebook Live mm-hmm. being at the top. So you want to limit the number of like articles or links you're sharing because that's kind of the lowest on the totem pole as far as reach and what you're going to get. Whoa, wait, say that again? Yeah. Have you ever noticed when you share an article, like maybe one person will like it or two people, it's a small number compared to when you write a whole post yourself? Yeah, I just thought it was because people love me more than well, they do the article. <laughs> that's the algorithm at work. <laughs> that's, and you listen, you just nailed it. That is how it works because Facebook sees the signals your friends give it when they like and engage with your content about you. And they see the signals that aren't coming in when you share something else that's not about you. So okay. it, it, literally okay. lowers the reach yeah did y'all anybody else know that make sure you put your um what make sure you put your questions in the in the comments so you can get them answered but did y'all know that i didn't know that i because i'm you know i'm sharing an article from nbc i'm thinking well heck that should be the one that people and then you know right behind that i'll write a long story about me torturing my mother and that gets a hundred <laughs> you know likes and people commenting about how le- hilarious i am so i'm just uh-huh, thinking yeah. it was because they just love me more but it's because the algorithms are set up that way that's right and they again they want you to create content on their platform they don't love bringing stuff from the outside because here's what happens what happens when you when you share that and someone clicks on the nbc article where do they go they go to the NBC website. The last thing Facebook wants people to do is leave Facebook. Leave the platform. Mm-hmm. That's because I hate that about Instagram that you can't make clickable. You can't make uh, links clickable. It's always got to be link in bio and all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Same thing. They're trying to keep you there. Okay. You yes. are smart, girl. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I got I got sidetracked. Okay. So no, you're good. another yeah another tactic of your secret sauce so the other part of the secret sauce too is like you know sharing something from someone else just one more thing i'll give you an example i shared your post from media mavericks academy about you're gonna go live with carrie ann malop right i shared that this morning right. and i wrote so my copy i'm kind of jealous because i'm like well she is the social media because like she doing most sharing and then i do <laughs> but i'm like that because i'm just i'm not in tune like that but go ahead sorry yes i did but- notice that it's all good. And so so here's what happened. I got maybe one or two people who liked it. Uh-huh. And I was like, no, 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 y'all don't understand. I'm about to go and hang out with my girl TJ tonight. This is a big deal. You need to respond accordingly. And then I was like, it's not them. Facebook isn't showing them this post. So that's an example, right? I posted that, shared your post from your mm-hmm. page. 
and I got is it because is it because it was my business page and there was no advertising dollars behind it? Could be, or just okay. the fact that there wasn't any human interaction so much. So what I did later in the day, earlier this afternoon, was right. I went live on my personal profile from the barbershop and my son was getting his hair cut and I promoted this event and I had 276 views from that going live. So live, really? I got to do better. It's a thing. It's a thing. Like there's numbers. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and but I was able to connect with my friends and be like, hey, guys, what's up, you know, and, and pop in and people are commenting and hey, yeah, oh, I got your post about that thing. Or you what are you doing? Are you on lunch? OK, cool. You know, mm -hmm. and then don't forget, 915 tonight, yada, yada. Right. You, you build it mm -hmm. in. But it's a conversation where you're being social. Yeah, there was there was a reason why I wanted to get on there. I wanted to invite my friends to come to this tonight. Right. But Facebook rewarded me by going live. So that's a tactic that works. Oh, my stars. That right there is golden. Y'all catch that? Did you catch <laughs> it? That was good. Okay. Uh, and one more. One more. Sure. Emojis. It's the actual language. <laughs> I don't like doing. <laughs> I'm like, I am, I'm, a, I'm so lazy when it comes to emojis and gifts. Like, I have a running joke with my friends, like, okay, go find me the, the most appropriate emoji to actually uh, cuss you out right now. It's because <laughs> I don't feel like doing it. So go find me the emoji and then respond to your darn self. Because that's that's funny. Are you serious? Emojis? I was at a conference where people from IBM presented on the language of emojis and how it helped from a beneficial standpoint when you're communicating on social media platforms. It does a couple things. It breaks up your eyes from just reading black and white text, right? So it's helpful when you see color. And then yeah. emojis is so funny. I mean, this is a real like business tactic, but emojis are universal, right? When you see a crazy face or like some of the one sticking out the tongue or, you know, the thinking face, what, what, we all understand what it means no matter what language you speak, right? And so... It's a way to subliminally communicate your thoughts and feelings without using words. Are you serious? That mm -hmm. right there is yummy, Carrie Ann. <laughs> I'm just too lazy to do it. I would rather type out LOL than go find the laugh out loud button. I know. And trust me, I, you know, writing content, which is your caption, you guys, like when you're writing your, it takes me and it has since MySpace days, way longer to create a caption for a piece of content because I'm always strategic in how it needs to be written and created because it makes a difference. If you spend an extra minute, you know, adding up those little things, it makes a difference. Wow. Like today, I was looking for the barbershop icon. Like I put the, bar you know, the little barbershop one, That's right? I'm so lazy for that. I okay. had to ask my son. I'm like, where's the bar? Where is the barbershop? I'm like, where is the barbershop one? Right. We had to find it. But it makes it more interesting for, for the, uh, the audience. You know, they're like, oh, it's context. It's visual, colorful context. There's something. For OK, me. well, this has been a great conversation. Let me just hit. Uh, do you can you just hang on a few more seconds yeah. and let me see what question. How many mo uh, and Annette is asking, how many emojis should we use? So don't overkill it. Right. Like I, I like to have one or two at the end of a sentence or in the middle somewhere. Um, and then do paragraph breaks, right? So do par I like the long posts. Like you like to read this. This is this is up your alley, right? Do long posts. That's good, but break it up with some emojis here and there. You know, um, don't overkill it, but just a little context. Okay. Um, Lee Ryman says, should should you go live on your personal page or your business page? Great question. Um, you should, this is, this is a, there's a couple different schools of thought. And here's what I would suggest is that, you know, go live on your personal profile to build communication, networks, relationships, all of those things. When you are selling something and you're really in business mode, you know, hop over to your page. Um, that's where that should all happen. Uh, you get people to watch you on both, right? But definitely they'll watch you on your personal profile. You have to be careful in business. I talked to my friend at Facebook. They, they could potentially shut you down if you are selling on your personal profile because that's not what the terms and conditions say. So you 
you want to try and do it more on your business page. The other thing, too, is that when you get into Facebook ads, you can put money behind a Facebook live. So if that was really effective for you and it worked and it was great content or whatnot, you can sponsor it there, but you can't do that on your personal profile. What about hashtags? Can you use too many? Jen Davidson says. On Instagram, you can add up to 30 hashtags per post. Um, there's a sweet spot you should find, but 30 is the max. Um, it's more about the, the right hashtags to use on Instagram. Facebook, the hashtag doesn't work the same on Facebook. People aren't really using it to communicate and they're not using it to search. So on Facebook, hashtags aren't really used for searchability or discoverability of your stuff. So don't really put them on there as much. Instagram, yes, for sure, up to 30, at least 10. Uh, Lugenia says, is it true that when you post congratulations, it increases your reach? Yep. There are keywords um, that trigger or send a signal to Facebook's algorithm saying this is an important post. Congratulations usually is around an event, a life event, something big. And so they will, when people start like liking and commenting and saying congratulations, it triggers that to say, we got a hot post here and they'll share it to more people. And so if you go to um, learn, I'm typing it in, it threw away all my pre-done titles when, oh, at the beginning, when remember I had to refresh. Yeah. yeah. So I've had to type some of it on the go. If you go to learn to go live.com, that is Carrie Ann's website. And there she has a free gift called the 10 commandments of Facebook live. So I need y'all to go over there and get you some Carrie Ann into your <laughs> life. Thank you. Um, Carrie Ann is that, Oh wait, did it change? I put it on the screen. Wait, hold on. Is there anything that I don't know enough about to even ask you? Like, Teej, you need to let me tell them this. I will mm. let that be your final thought as to what it is that is really key. That if y'all if y'all ignore everything else I have said, do not miss this point. For me, my biggest takeaway, and um, let Carrie Ann know in the comments some what some of your biggest takeaways. I know my biggest takeaway was the whole six times more uh, mm -hmm. with the live and emojis being a whole separate language that I need to incorporate. But that was my two biggest one. But what about what about um, for you? Uh, or what is it? Anything else that I need to to make sure that they know before we say good night? Yeah, well, the first thing is that this is constantly changing, you know, like, uh, don't stress yourself out over trying to keep up because it is impossible. Do your best, you know, make it an effort to to learn what you can by showing up here and watching this video. You've already succeeded in that task, everyone like that's good. Keep doing that when you can. Um, but it's impossible to know everything, right, because it changes so rapidly fast. But you know, get a grasp of it. Um, but I would say the biggest thing, especially for the crowd of solopreneurs, or small business owners, um, creating a strong personal brand online is the key to everything here I've said. And no matter if it's Facebook, MySpace, <laughs> whatever's coming next, that's the through line. If you have a strong personal brand where you are memorable entertaining, you're, you're a content creator. I call it the three B's, be memorable, be, be a content creator, be entertaining. Like you're gonna win because that's what people are here for. They want those categories of value to happen when they jump on this platform or any other social media platform. So, so really investigate what that means for you to create a strong personal brand as the face of your business. Use the tools like Facebook Live to Amplify your personal brand quickly because that's what will happen and it'll be great and amazing and you'll be able to reach through the lens and pick up money on the table. I think I've done well in building my personal brand. I actually mm -hmm. prefer to build my personal brand because then I can just be me and love on people and tell them stories mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, which is what I love to do. Carrie Ann, you are freaking incredible. I am so 
so, so honored to have you come play. Thank you so much for your generosity of your time. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, and pouring into and pouring into my folks because I love my folks. I really, 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 really do. So while I'm closing out, guys, show Carrie Ann some love. Keep telling her what the takeaways were. Her Because what helps... Okay, so I'm always coaching. Y'all know that. Because reading your comments will then help her when she goes back. Because when you're so close to your genius, it she can do this stuff in her sleep. So it helps when she knows what it is that resonated. So she makes sure that it goes into our next media interviews. It goes into her keynotes because she may not think it's a big deal, but if y'all tell her, no, that point was game changing. So, uh, yeah, talk about that more because that's Thank how, you. you know, she will get better in her media interviews and everything. So the last thing I want to say for those of you who are not familiar or don't know is that, April 25th to the 27th, I'm going to spend three days in LA with seven women. I have three spots left for the League of Extraordinary Storytellers Retreat. You are going to spend time with your girl, uh, teaching you how to show up powerfully on the stage, powerfully on the in the media, and powerfully in social media. The guarantee is that you will walk away with three of your signature stories. Uh, you know, people love my stories. I, I'm a storyteller. I've been telling stories for 20 something, no, 30 something years at this point, because I've been telling stories my whole life. And um, millions of people have, have, you know, watched my stories, whether they watched them behind the camera when I was producing and editing television or they watch me in front of the camera when I'm doing keynotes or actually on TV. So I was ordered to create this retreat in LA uh, for a group of women that I'm not doing any kind of big push. I ain't doing no Facebook ads for it, Carrie Ann. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it is coming up April 25th through the 27th. The spots went quickly because I just announced it. Uh, so there's only three of the seven spots left. So if you want more information about that, go to, um, and I'll put this in the chat once I'm done, pimpyourprnow.com slash LXS, League of Extraordinary Storytellers, April 2019. So pimpyourprnow.com LXS. April 2019, and it has all the details. I'm building the plane as I fly it because I didn't have a plan to do this. I was jacked and demanded <laughs> that I create this for a group of women that I coached when I was in Atlanta, and they told me that they want me to. They want to come to LA to uh, to do this. So it's it's people are snatching their spots with just me word of mouth. All right, so that is it for Pimp Yo PR Wednesday. Go over to LearnToGoLive.com to get more Carrie Ann in your life. Carrie Ann, hug yourself for me. And uh, we're going to count it down. Just y'all know how we do. We count it down out so that um, if you have any last minute, like things you got to say, question you need to ask, you got time to chat, uh, type it out uh, before I disconnect. So in 10, 9, 8, Seven. Lisa Reed says the algorithm information was key in getting rid of ego in order to serve your customers. That's what she said. Her biggest takeaway. Lugenia says, thank you. This was awesome and very helpful. Hashtag game changer. Six, five, four. Lee Ryman says, thanks to both of you. Rochelle says, thanks so much. Three, two, Kim Phillips says, congratulations, ladies. This was a great combo. Uh, one, Mwah. see y'all next week. I don't know who's going to be here yet, but I'll be here. If nothing else, I'll be here. All right. Oh, and by the way, we got to celebrate. I had a Maverick on Dr. Oz today. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, all right, babies. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Carrie Ann. I appreciate you so Bye. much. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, TJ. Bye.